As the LHC has been working and running, people are beginning to ask the question, what comes next in the world of high energy physics? Should there be another collider? And it's kind of become an issue for some people because the Large Hadron Collider, although it's, it's doing fantastic science, it's measuring quantities to amazingly high precision. If you think of it in terms of a discovery of new particles, it's discovered one, which was the Higgs back in 2012. Which is what it was built for. Exactly. Really an incredible thing that has happened in my lifetime. But it's not found anything else. It's not found any evidence of uh, dark matter, which through, through the world of supersymmetry. It's not found any evidence of more exotic things, perhaps like uh, extra dimensions or other new particles. It has demonstrated that we have a, effectively a, a, an interaction between the Higgs and the fermions, a, a force acting there that we need to understand better because we can now probe that regime, which we couldn't before. But the question is, do we build an even bigger collider? And it was brought to the forefront by the, uh, a recent publication suggesting that there might be a, what they call a future circular collider based at CERN. That's where the current Large Hadron Collider is. The Large Hadron Collider is underground in a ring that's about 25 kilometers long. The future circular collider would be a ring that's 100 kilometers long, four times the length. It would cost of order 10 to 20 billion pounds. Naturally, a question that you, we need to ask ourselves, both as physicists, but also society, you know, where do you want to invest these large amounts of money? There was a particular article that, that, at least within the particle physics community, was read a lot by Sabine Hossenfelder, in which she said, although she accepted that probing fundamental physics through a, a particle accelerator is like the best microscope there is to do that, the fact that we've only made this one discovery and we don't have any great ideas as to what is coming next in terms of theory, Perhaps we should be deferring building, maybe not even building a future collider until we have our theories firmly better established. And then we can perhaps go ahead once we've said, well, this is almost certainly to be, be the way forward and, and, and therefore that will dictate the form of any large collider. Rather than kind of fumbling in the dark. I think that's a, probably she would agree with that, that, that the way that we, if we, go ahead right now, we are, we'll be basing it on physics that we already know, but more speculative physics about what's coming next. And so it's a really important question to address. For me personally, I think it's a, it's a, it's, there's not a clear cut answer. I, I remember back in the 1980s when the Large Hadron Collider was being put forward, maybe even slightly earlier. People did think they knew what the, the solution was. They did think that uh, dark matter would be found in what are known as WIMPs, weakly interacting massive particles. There was, we talked about a WIMP miracle, and uh, there were natural candidates for this WIMPs, which were coming from supersymmetry. The Higgs mechanism had been suggested back in the 60s, and so there was, a, there was in some sense, a well-defined path to go along. And in fact, I, in a, the very first conference I ever went to in 1983, was at the Royal Society and Stephen Hawking gave a talk there in which he said, we will know everything by the end of the century. And it's all N equals eight supergravity, he called it. It was called, and it turned out not to be the case. There was an example where we did think we knew where we were going and we, the decision on the LHC was made. And you do need to make these many years in advance. You know, the LHC came into operation 2008, right? 20 odd years, nearly 30 years after the initial proposal. The proposal for the future circular collider would have it starting in 2050. Because you've, you've got to build these things, you've got to develop the technology. Ed, are you saying that the Large Hadron Collider didn't end up discovering the thing it was built to discover? It, no, it did. The Higgs, you, you are quite right, you said at the very beginning that its primary goal was to discover the Higgs, but it had secondary goals. And there was a real feeling that it, it would probably be able to, if it found the Higgs, it would probably find the, uh, these WIMP particles because there was supersymmetric models which suggested that WIMP particles would be in the same sort of mass range as the Higgs. So that, if it, that wasn't the case. And that wasn't the case. They have just not, they've just not shown up. In fact, no new particles have shown up. So the 
argument for building the big circular collider isn't there as strongly as it was for the LHC. In the sense of having a whole series of particles that you think you're going to find, yeah, as far as I can tell, there's not. And in fact, it would be a case of we'd be building it partly in order to actually use the, LH, the, the upgraded LHC. And of course, the LHC itself still has many years left of its lifetime to go. Um, be using it not only as a discovery machine to, to, to actually find new things that might, might be there, but also to, as a high precision machine to help us understand the standard model, and in particular the Higgs and the interaction the Higgs has with fermions, with the, the things that you and I are made of, the quarks and the leptons, to, to help us understand those interactions much, much better. Because another way of finding new physics is to say, here's my standard model prediction for some very exotic process. Then I go and measure that exotic process and I find a difference. And, it's a, it, and the difference may only be in like the 10th decimal place, but if you're sure about the calculations that have gone into it and sure about the measurements, then there's, you're probing, you're finding evidence of new physics. <gasps> wow. <laughs> That's <Hey. really> <laughs> <laughs> This is it, it's the detector. And that's one reason why you would go for a, a, you know, a much more powerful machine that can probe into these new areas, smaller length scales, higher energy, where things might pop up. We, we just don't know. It's one of the frustrating things about this. There's two things that can go on here. You can build a new collider to find a new particle and have some paradigm change. Yeah. Or you can build one to just like fine-tune and get higher resolution and better pictures. And they're two different arguments, it feels like. Yeah, but in fine-tuning, you're looking for differences, right? It's not a case of, I mean, it's, that's what you're always probing for. You're, the way physics works, right, is we basically, we don't try to confirm models, we try to rule them out. That's kind of in our heads. We try to find deviations. And that's what would this fine-tuning, it would be rather than having, you know, uh, something smash you in the face and say, here I am, this brand new particle, look at me, I've, I've revolutionized things straight away. It's a much more subtle way of doing it. You're finding deviations from what the standard model would say. And, and, and it, nature is, can be like this. It, it, can, it can hide these new ingredients that make it very difficult to find. And if we don't build something, we're not going to find them this way. Ed, I know it takes a long time to build these things, but still wouldn't it make more sense to wait for the next really paradigm-breaking, yeah. plausible theory. And I, I think the next Peter Higgs, I, and then start yeah. building something. I think Sabine's got a very valid point here that, you know, uh, but, but the question also is at what stage in that process do you say, aha, now it's time to build my new, you know, f future circular collider? Because there are kind of two, two aspects to it. One is, the, the technology involved in here, I'm, I'm a theorist, but what do, hey, what do I know? But I believe the technology involved in this is really complicated, okay? You, you, they're always at the cutting edge, developing things. So what the LHC can do right today, the, back in the 1980s, people had no idea they'd be able to do it at the level that they can do it because technology has developed. One of the reasons they've been able to do it is that there was always a funding stream to help support the superconducting magnets, to help support the development of the accelerator technology, the detector technology. If you put that on hold, right, and say, okay, let's just let the theorists have a go now for a while until we come up with something. What are these people going to do? They're not going to hang around. They're not going to play, say, yeah, this is okay. Let's just, the theories take about five years. Let's go and do something else. They're going to leave. And the subject, and the, it runs the real risk. It is an expensive subject. It's like Apollo. It's like Apollo. They will leave and that's it. It will be the end of it. And, and okay, if, you, if you're prepared to accept that, so be it. That, that's the nature of it. There is one possible route through. I, 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 and I think CERN are, are playing this. Um, they're playing for two possible scenarios here. There's another one, which is that Although they've come out with this future collider, circular collider paper, and I personally think it's really exciting, they've also, at the sort of at the same time, come up with a, with another set of papers where they're looking at actually what it, can we make use of what's around CERN at the moment to actually probe different types of physics, which would still be pr looking at the underlying fundamental physics uh, of, of of our universe, but not 
requiring you know, really high energy particle collisions. And this is motivated partly by the fact that we've not seen any evidence of dark matter. We've not seen these massive dark matter particles. And maybe what, what is actually going on in the universe, the, the, these equivalent dark matter particles aren't very massive. They're maybe really light and they don't interact very much with us. In which case, it, having a big, heavy, large hadron-like collider won't be the way to see them. We need more sophisticated, um, ready-made, precisely made uh, detectors to pick up some of these light particles like axions, specific axion detectors. And so one possibility is to actually look at, um, for a set of um, experiments that, that could be based around CERN using the, the, the accelerators they've already got and using some of the facilities they've already got. So just bolt better experiments onto the existing ring? They use it, yeah, so they use it, I, I, bolt is a, <laughs> I was thinking of a um, gently place, existing, you know, use, use what you've got and then, and then develop. There, there are lots of bolts. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. God, that was so exciting. And, and of course, you're building new things as well, but that's, that's, that's another possible. And so why have I said that? I could imagine the community saying, OK, for, let's have this period where we, we go that route for a little while. Let's keep the R&D going for the, for the big accelerators. But during that period, we can be probing, testing these, these models of weak coupling regimes, light dark matter particles, screening mechanisms which could account for you know, the, the fifth force that, 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 that it could be driving the acceleration of the universe. But meanwhile, carry on with its R&D, invest in the R&D for the future accelerators. And then hopefully the, either some results will come out of these new set of proposals or some theoretical developments will emerge which say, yeah, this is the way we should be going. And then you can sort of decide, okay, now we'll start the, the process on. But there is always this risk. Back in the 80s, people were absolutely certain, I think, pretty certain apart that, not absolutely, but fairly certain that WIMPs were the way forward and that supersymmetry was the way forward. There was no question to build the Large Hadron Collider after the um, Large Electron-Positron Collider. It was, it was just the thing to do, and it turned out not to be right. It's, uh, it, it, who knows? That's the excitement of many ways of working in these kind of fields. What would you do, Ed? Because like, obviously you're biased and you're a particle mm, physicist, yeah. but you do live in a world where you also like hospitals and yeah. potholes to be filled yeah. and you have, yeah. you have children are growing up in the world who need infrastructure. Sure, yeah, yeah. How do you think the money should be spent? It's so much money. It is a lot of money. Um, I, w I would spend it. <laughs> um, I Because for a number of reasons. One is, uh, you know, it's not just the UK contributing to CERN. CERN has got 22 members. Uh, it's got, uh, I don't know, eight affiliated members. Uh, you know, there's 30 countries here. We'll all contribute. They'll contribute over many, many years, okay? It's not as if this is a, an immediate outlay. So there's a dispersion of the, of, of the actual finance. Of course, hospitals need all the facilities they can, but you know, particle physics live in hospitals, right? My, my, you know, my dear father who passed away, when I went to the city hospital for him to have radiology treatment, on the wall is this amazing plaque. I've tried to find an image of it that talks about the cyclotron accelerator that they were using. And, the, and that's, that was the particle physics of the 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, that is now in medicine. The MRI scanner that was invented here at, um, here at Nottingham uses technology from the physics environment for, that was just purely for research that has now been embedded in, in hospitals all around the world. Medicine needs funding in its own right, of course it does, but it's had so much input from fundamental ideas, fundamental physics ideas for a start, and chemistry, and radioisotopes that you know everywhere in, in medicine, that to simply simply say, yeah, we should be putting all of this into medicine, for example, is not the way to make the major breakthroughs that will help people in the future in medicine either. What makes us special? What makes us special is our inquisitive nature. We want to know about the universe. We want to know about beautiful pictures and admire them. We want to know about what makes the universe tick. And we should have the facilities to be able to invest in all of these. Then 
on the outside, the bulk of the detector here is actually for stopping the muons. These elementary particles, which are uh, like electrons, but 200 times heavier. And they're so important because if you find a muon, it tells you that something really high energy has happened. They're very difficult to create. And so you, if, if, a, if a muon's detected, and, and they're very difficult to detect, they just shoot through all the other things we've been describing.